Hi everyone and welcome to this new Godot tutorial. In this video, we will look at how we can create a Zelda like camera or a room transition camera or a fixed position camera. It has a lot of names. One where the camera only moves once the player moves outside the camera view. Using a camera like this can make the game world feel a bit like a maze with new discoveries around every corner. If you'd rather watch a tutorial on how to create a camera that follows the player all the time, then I already have a video for that in my Action RPG series from last year. I've left a link in the description to where you can find it. And now let's get started. Okay, so the project I have set up so far just includes a world scene with a tile map and a player scene. The player can move around but that's about as complex as this project is at the moment. So let's start by adding a camera 2D node to our world scene. And then attach a new script to it. We need to access two things before we can do anything else. First, we need an exported reference to the player. And then we also need a variable that stores the size of the camera. We can set the size using the get viewport rect function and then getting the size of the returned rect. So the way this camera works is that we divide our world into a grid. And each cell in the grid is then the size of the camera view. The camera's position should then always be set so that the view covers exactly one of these cells. To do this, we need to figure out what cell the camera should cover. Most of the time, this should always be the cell the player is in. But you could also use the system to show what's going on in other parts of the game world. For this to work, we need the camera's position to be at the top left of its view. So we need its anchor mode to be set to top left. This can be done in the camera nodes inspector menu. Okay, so back in our script, let's set up a new function for updating the position of the camera. Here, the first step will be to figure out what cell the player is in. We can do this with a little math trick. First, we create a vector 2i variable to store the cell the player is in. The i specifies that the values in the vector are stored as integers. We can then set the cell to be the global position of the player divided by the size of the camera. This will then automatically round down when the result is cast to integers. Now that we have the cell the player is in, we can use this to set the position of the camera. This will just be the cell multiplied by the camera size. The first time we want to update the camera is when the game starts. So let's add a ready function to the camera script and call the function that updates the camera's position here. And now let's test and see how it works. Whoops, I forgot to assign the player to the exported player variable in the camera script. So let's go do that. And okay, I can see that our usage of the vector 2i is also causing problems at the moment. This is because GDescript doesn't like to mix integer vectors with the other vectors, but luckily we can easily fix this. First, I specify that the size variable should also be an integer vector. And then, when we calculate the current cell, we need to cast the player's position to a vector 2i, so we can divide it by the size. And then, let's test the new code a few times and move the player between cells 
to see that the camera starts at the correct position each time. And this seems to work fine. Now we also need to update the camera's position when the player moves outside its view. For now, we can just do this by adding a physics process function to our camera script and also call the update position function here. Let's test and see how it looks. Yay, we already got the basics of our new camera up and running. That wasn't so bad. And we could also just stop here, but I have a few tweaks and tricks that I want to share with you that will make this camera even better. First, let's consider when the camera moves. Does this seem right? Is this what you're going for? Most likely you will have noticed that the up and down transitions can seem a bit odd. The camera moves down just as soon as the player touches the lower border, but it won't move up until the whole player is outside the screen. What do you think is the cause of this? Well, if we look at our player scene, we can see that the player isn't centered around its origin position. Instead, it's standing on top of it. This is so Y sorting works correctly. But this also means that the position of the player isn't at its center or one of the corners. And I actually don't think we can assume that this is always the same. So I really don't want to hard code any values in the camera script that can fix the problem. Instead, I will add a new function to our player that can be used to get the global position of its center. This function will just return the player's global position plus the position of the animated sprite I'm using for the player. If you're using a regular sprite for the player, then you just use the position of this. Note that this isn't the global position of the sprite. This is a position relative to its parent's position. Now let's use this new function in our camera script. Instead of using the player's global position to find the grid cell the camera should show, we now call our new function on the player and use its center position. Let's test again and see how it looks. And now I want to show you two small tweaks that I like to add. The first has to do with where the player is positioned after the camera moves. Do we want the player to be standing half inside the new grid cell? Or do you want it to be properly positioned in the new cell that is shown? I like to push the player a bit, so I'm sure it's completely within the new cell. To do this, I add yet another function to my player script and call it clamp to limits. This function should have two input variables. One is a limit position and the other is a limit size. We can then use these to clamp the player's global position within the bounds that the limit position and limit position plus limit size creates. But the player also has its own size we have to account for. So we add and subtract half the width of the player sprite when we clamp the X part of the global position. And we just add the height of the sprite to the lower limit when we clamp the Y part of the global position. Now, if the player was perfectly centered around its origin position, then we would add and subtract half the size in both cases. But as we noted earlier, the player sprite is standing above the position which is why we just add the full height to the lower Y limit. 
In this case, I've just hard-coded these values, because I know that the sprite is 16 by 16 pixels and it won't change. If your sprite has a different size, then you have to change these values accordingly. But a better solution would be to get the actual size from your sprite or your sprite frames and use them here. Or at the very least, create a variable with the size at the top of the script so it's easier to find and change later on. Okay, now we still need to call this function from somewhere, of course. Let's first try to just call it from the physics process function right after we update the position. Mm, this doesn't seem to work. The player can't really move into a new cell like this. And the reason for this is simple. When we clamp the player to the bounds of the camera each frame, then it will never move even a single pixel outside the bounds, and thus it will never enter a new cell, and the camera will never move. So we need to only call the clamp function when the cell has changed. For this, I create a new current cell variable at the top of the script. And then this is the variable we set in the update position function. In our physics process function, we can then store this in a new variable before we update the position. And then compare this to the new current cell afterwards. We will then only clamp the player if the cell has changed. Now let's test again and see how it works. The player should now be nicely placed in the new cell whenever the camera moves. I hope you like this first little tweak. The second one has, once again, to do with when the camera moves. At the moment, we only use the player's center position to decide when we want to move the camera. And this may be exactly what you want, that's fine. But I'm not entirely sure I want the player to be able to walk partly outside the view like this. At least not this much. Maybe we want some kind of margin around the view. And if the player enters this margin, then the camera should move and the player should be clamped to the new cell. We can do this in a lot of ways, but personally, I feel that we shouldn't try to do too many clever tricks here. It's something that should be fine-tuned for the specific game and the specific player. So. I start by adding four exported transition offset variables at the top of the script, one for each direction. And I won't go into much detail with the rest of the code, but it's somewhat similar as the code we created earlier for claiming the player. I made a new function to update the cell. This creates a direction the camera should move and then adds this to the current cell. If the player is within the bounds, then the direction is zero and nothing changes. In the physics process function, I then update the cell and then only if it's different from the old cell, we update the position. And of course we don't update the current cell in the position update function anymore. Finally, we also need to change the ready function a bit. Here we set the current cell using the player's center position as before, and then just update the camera position afterwards. Okay, now let's test and see that everything still works. You should also play around with the transition offsets to see what you prefer they are set to in your game, or if you even want them at all. I currently like when Almost all of them are set to 4, but I set the down offset to 6. Okay, so this video is getting really long already, but I still have one little thing I want to show you. This is actually a whole nother way of doing a camera like this. It isn't really a solution I've seen before, but I'm sure I'm not the first one to think of it. 
instead of doing the long scripts like we did in this video and which is usually the way this is done, we can do something else. But first, if you like this video and want to see more like this, then remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the bell and all that. And if you want to support my work with the channel further, you can do this on Patreon or by becoming a member here on YouTube. You can also make donations on itch.io where you can download the art I make for my tutorials. Okay, so back to the fun new solution. Instead of the camera we just created, we can create a new scene for the camera and then add area 2Ds just outside its view. The player then also has a new area 2D that's used together with the camera's areas to decide when the camera should move. This is also a really fun way to make a camera like this and I encourage you to see if you can get this working on your own. And that's all for now. I hope you like this video.